Violence broke out in Hull, Liverpool, Bristol, Manchester, Stoke-on-Trent, Blackpool and Belfast and it follows days of unrest after three young girls were killed in a stabbing in Southport on Monday. Speaking last night, the Home Secretary Yvette Cooper condemned the violence. We will give the police all the backing that they need in response to this, this criminal disorder and thuggery. That's why we're ensuring that there are additional prosecutors in place this weekend, that the courts stand ready as well. We have to make sure that anyone who engages in this kind of unacceptable disorder really pays the price. Well, Police Scotland say they've no intelligence indicating anything similar is being organised here, but officers do say they are monitoring things closely. Let's speak to our correspondent, Lee Milner. Um, so, Lee, what is the latest then? As you say, 90 people have so far been arrested. Last night, it was Liverpool in the north of England, which saw some of the worst disorder, really, as police faced crowds armed with bricks, bottles, and this morning, fireworks. A library was set on fire, and two police officers were taken to hospital, one with a suspected broken nose, the other with a broken jaw. Meanwhile, in Belfast, there were clashes between anti-immigration and anti-racism protesters outside the city hall. The crowds there were shouting chants at each other while police were in their riot gear. Now, tensions had been building all week, really, after the killing of three young girls at a Taylor Swift-themed dance party in Southport in Merseyside on Monday. But yesterday, we really saw the violence escalate with far-right demonstrations descending into riots in towns and cities right across England and Northern Ireland. Not all demonstrations were violent, though. In some places, protesters dispersed by the evening. But speaking for the National Police Chief's Council, Chief Constable BJ Harrington said those involved in the disorder were not protesters, but criminals causing senseless destruction. He said police will be ready for anyone planning to cause trouble in the coming days. And how much then of this can be blamed on social media? Well, so, so one of the early signs that protests were brewing came in a Southport-themed group, which sets up on a, a messaging app called Telegram about six hours after the attack last week. Now, this app has historically been used by far-right activists. It, it became flooded with misinformation about the identity of the alleged attacker and posts by other far-right groups such as the National Front. And despite this channel not having many followers, those posts were were later shared on TikTok, X and Facebook. Merseyside police have publicly identified the English Defence League as a key factor of these protests, spreading from Southport right across the country. Uh, an influencer on X who posts under the name of Lord Simon was among the first to publicly call for nationwide protests. His account promoted false claims that the alleged Southport attacker had been an asylum seeker. He'd recently arrived in the UK by boat and that that video has actually been viewed over a million times. So while it's clear that there are many influences out there on social media, there is no single organising force behind these post protests.